not feel pressure or feel less than because it takes you a whole day to get braids done. I was there and I'm pretty sure any other braider can tell you they've been there before too. You just have to work at it. We're like diamonds in the sky. I knew that way, big on one right way. All right away. At first sight, I felt energy of surrender. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. On behalf of Britt, if you're new here, welcome. I'm Brittany, and today we are finally continuing my life as a braider series. Um, I pretty much share my experience and knowledge that I've gained over the years with braiding um, to help other women out or other braiders out. So today we're picking up with episode seven. It's been some months since I've done one of these videos. I want to say about three or four months, but I have about five girl talks planned out. Um, and I'm gonna just roll them out to y'all and try to play catch up. And as I always tell y'all when I do these videos, if there's any questions that come to mind while y'all are listening or anything that you want to know as a new braider, definitely leave me a comment down below and I'll consider your questions for future videos to come. So we're gonna jump into today's video, but before that, I want you guys to give me some feedback. I believe this is the very first upload since getting my intro redone. Um, I told y'all in the video before this, uh, when I had that photo shoot that I would be getting a new intro and it was finally completed a few days ago so definitely leave me a comment down below if you like the new intro I'll have all of her information linked down below the girl that did my intro got it done in a couple of hours she was very um on point with everything as far as communication getting back to me she's young I want to say she's like 20 years old very creative and like I said very like punctual so everything moved pretty fast she was very affordable too so if you're a youtuber and you're looking to start a channel or just like like i did upgrade things on your channel and have a new intro new banner new outro she does everything for a cheap like a real cheap price so all that information will be down below but yeah let's get into today's topic okay so i'm not sure what i titled the video yet but pretty much today i want to talk to you about speed when it comes to braiding i've had a few people dm me a lot of clients um ask me while getting their hair done how do you move so fast because i've been to the africans and it took them six hours i come to you and it takes you four hours or new braiders may comment on older videos where i talk about the time it takes me to braid or how quick I can get people in and out or how many people I take in a day and they're like how are you doing that so I decided to that my very next girl talk the one I did today would have to definitely be about speed um, and give y'all some of my tips and tricks on how to be faster through appointments um, when it comes to speed itself I just want to be practical and give y'all the real I cannot sit here and demonstrate nor describe how to be fast like how to complete a braid in seconds that's not something that i feel like i can teach y'all there is a youtuber on this platform that has a video out that y'all can find that can show y'all how to just be quick and y'all definitely give me their channel so i can find out how to turn my minutes into seconds but i honestly feel like speed is something that comes with experience it's the whole cliche saying that i'm gonna throw at y'all now practice makes perfect you definitely just have to work at your skill day in and day out any style that may come out that you're slow with even once you get fast with typical braids the traditional braids and there's different styles that come out work at it the ones that take you um longer lengths of time in your downtime try to practice those um on a mannequin on yourself on a close friend or relative and pick up that speed by practicing i'm definitely going to throw some tips out at y'all on how to get through the appointment smoothly or more swiftly when um working around just building that speed but as far as like putting a braid in your hand and trying to teach you how to glide through it really fast i don't think i can actively teach you guys that speed just comes with repetition it's something when it when it comes to braiding and moving your hands moving your body even as a dancer or as an athlete um once you do something over and over again it just comes as second nature so with braiding and moving your hands you have to find your own rhythm find your own speed um your own comfortability with the hair with attaching the hair my mom said i was serious about hair maybe two years into braiding she got me a mannequin and that particular mannequin it can be found on amazon now they have she have thicker coarser hair that's more so similar to natural and then I have a another mannequin now, my second mannequin that I use on the regular. She has silkier, um, 
softer hair is more like a blowout texture or more of like a um, silk press texture and that is the one I do most of my practicing on because if I can get through silkier uh, relaxed hair uh, fast I know I can glide through the coarser hair so I like to practice on the different mannequins and different hair textures um, on skills or different styles that I'm not as quick with so that I can build up that speed. I definitely feel like when starting out you should practice on different hair textures uh, because that also will slow you down if someone sits in your chair and they have a hair texture you're not used to. Attaching cankalon to silky hair, it'll slip. It That grip is hard to get if you aren't used to working with it. It is uh, pretty tricky. So when it comes to speed, y'all, I would just say practice. But now I'm going to jump into some tips that may help you get through the appointment quicker when you're still building your speed. So a lot of the tips that I'm about to say are pretty obvious, especially if you're a braider that's experienced. You've been in the braid game for years or whatever. You're going to listen to this stuff and be like, oh, duh, I've been doing that or I already know that. But this may be a gentle reminder to some braiders that have slipped away from some of these habits or to new braiders who may ha not have thought this deep yet. So I'm just going to throw out a few tips as far as preparation and getting your day all set up, organization, different things you can do in your home salon or at your salon where you work um, at the beginning of the day or in between appointments to help you. So a lot of my first tips come out of the whole category of preparation, getting prepared for appointments. Um, one of the main things you can do is prep the hair first, prep the weave and prep your client's hair first. So when prepping the weave, um, if you're a client, a stylist who provides hair, this is really, really convenient for you. You see that they're getting a feed-in style or a knotlet style where you're going to have to separate the hair. Go ahead and separate the hair before they come. Or if you're anything like myself and you have your clients to bring your, the hair to their appointments, um, purchase their own hair, you have to wait till they come through your door to set everything up. But go ahead and take that 15, 20 minutes before you even get started. What I like to do when my clients come in, nine times out of ten, they're going to sit down and have small talk. Talk, how you been, what's been going on, girl, they're telling me about their day. As we're doing that, I'm going ahead and I'm opening all of the hair. One of the first things I do is remove all of the hair from the packaging. If my client brought me three packs of hair, every last pack, all three packs will be open before I even touch their head. I don't like to open a pack and start braiding then get about a third of the way open another pack braid that hair then at the end open the third pack um like i said this may be obvious but i go ahead and remove all of the hair all of the rubber bands i clip all of that stuff off i run my hands through the hair get really familiar with the texture of hair that they brought um go ahead and separate the hair if it's a feed-in style and just get the hair all set up before i even touch them while we're having small talk while there i may hand them the remote and let them choose a series or a movie on tv um, go ahead and let them get comfortable if they need to run to the restroom real quick, real quick before getting started. Um, taking that 15-20 minutes and it may seem time consuming when you go and prep all the hair every single last pack in the beginning. But it makes all of the difference when you're in the process of braiding and you don't have to stop. Also, before I start the first braid, I like to go ahead, before my clients even come, now I don't have to wait for the hair to do this, I go ahead and remove any clips I'm going to use. Um, everything is already disinfected, wiped down, and ready to go before my clients come. So I'll go into my different containers now, and I'll pull out my clips, pull out any scrunchies I need, uh, set aside the disinfected, the clean combs that I'm going to need, um, go ahead and get my edge controls ready before they even come. In between appointments, I'm setting all of this up. So then I prep the clients here before starting that first braid. Um, at first, when I started out, I would... Uh, separate i would do pre-parting and pre-section and now that i got into my flow and i've really mastered speed i don't really section my clients hair out unless they have a whole lot of hair but as a new braider i definitely feel like it'll help you if you practice pre-parting and pre-sectioning um, so prep that hair get those tools out prep your clients hair and it'll save you some time definitely also you want to try to organize your workspace. So whether you're at home or in a salon, try to have everything in a designated area where you know where to get to it. One thing that used to kill me, I had stuff scattered out. There was no organization. 
I would pull out random combs, pull out scrunchies, pull out hair ties, have the edge control in one place, have the scissors in one place, and then in between braids, I'm looking for the scissors, I'm looking for the comb. I got some flyaways I need to trim, but I can't find what I did with the scissors, or I need the edge control, but I didn't set it down somewhere, moving fast, trying to get through the braid, just setting stuff, sitting stuff down in conversation and not realizing what I'm doing, and then I'm searching one to two minutes in between braids where I could be then got through a full braid. I'm looking for the product because I don't know where I put it. One thing that really has brought me time or saved me some time um, with getting through my appointments so quick is I have a whole like routine. I have a whole setup, a whole organization method in my head, in my whole setup where um, I know where everything is. Because I'm left-handed, all of my tools and everything that I pick up the most often in the appointment, I keep to my left. So that's the combs because I'm picking up the comb every time I'm in between a braid. The combs are to my left. The um, braid and wax is to my left. The scissors are to my left uh, to cut, to trim as I'm going through appointments. To my right, I may have extra scrunchies, extra clamps, um, mousse, uh, the stuff that I use maybe towards the end of the appointment. So as soon as I'm doing a braid, I'm putting my scissors down to my left. As soon as I'm done doing a braid and I need to add wax or my wristband is empty, my wax is to my left. I'm going left to right. I know the stuff I don't touch as much is to the right. Everything else is to the left, so I don't even have to look, turn my head, look for nothing. I'm braiding, and I'm reaching here. I'm reaching here. I know what my scissors feel like. I know what the comb feels like, and I just have everything organized. Left, right, left, right. The braid in between. Left, right. The braid in between. Just going like this. I can look at a show, talk to my client. I had a braid if I need to, but for the most part, my tools are all in one place. It may sound crazy listening to it or watching me right now, but I promise you, if you organize your workspace and put everything in a designated area, that'll save you some time. There's been plenty of times where I didn't spend two or three minutes looking for the scissors because I didn't stuck it in my apron or stuck it somewhere crazy, like just in conversation. So now I know I put everything to my left that I'm going to pick up most often, everything else to my right. That saves me a lot of time. I hope that's a trick that you guys can try if you haven't already and let me know how it works for you. Organize your workspace, child, and have everything like set up and ready to go before the client even sits down. Try that out. Also, um, one thing I like to do is multitask through appointments um, to, get, to get through things quicker. So while my client is in the restroom, if I'm running low, any little small break that I'm able to get when my client may leave the chair, I'm using that time to either re-rack my ad hair to the rack once I've removed a lot of the hair through the appointment and my rack is getting empty. I'll use that time multitasking in any break. I'm not sitting down touching a phone. I'm not sitting down um, twiddling my fingers. Whenever I get the smallest break, I'm using that time to multitask. Also, when I reach the end of the appointment, when I get to the last couple of braids, prior to my client even coming, if I know that they're getting a style that needs to be dipped, I go ahead and I fill up my kettle. I have this kettle off of Amazon. I'll definitely link that down below as well. Um, I want to say it was about $25 to $30. It wasn't any more than $30. I want to say it was $28. I go ahead and put water in my kettle and sit my kettle on my counter before the client comes. And then once I reach those last couple breaks, it takes about two minutes for my kettle to warm up. I'll go ahead, once I reach the last couple of breaks, leave my client, go to the kitchen, plug up my kettle, go ahead and get the water started. Um, and during that three minutes while the water is boiling, I'll come back to my client's hair and do like all of my finishing um, things. So basically putting the foam on, laying their edges if they want, edge designs i'm doing their edge control at that point i'm um, doing any trimming any flyaways oil sheens i'm pulling all of that stuff out and i'm doing all of that during the three minutes that the water is boiling there's no time to sit around if i know i want to get people in and out i'm multitasking and then when the water is ready about three minutes later i go back i get the water off of the dock bring it to my client's head dip their ends and the dipping is like the very last step at that point because I've already moosed it, oil sheened it, done their edge control. While the water was boiling, once I dip it, I dry it off and they're ready to go. And that's something that saves me time to um, go ahead and having the water set up, just go press the button, come back, do certain things, then go back and get it once the water is ready. So multitasking has helped me a lot, prepping, keeping my space organized and 
I believe that's pretty much it, y'all. Um, I'm trying to think of every little tip that I can give y'all as far as moving swift. Some braiders, they like to install all the braids first and then braid them down. That's something that has helped other braiders. For me, I just like to braid from top to bottom, every single braid from top to bottom the moment I install it. But some people have found, and maybe you can try this out too, they do this thing where, and I wish I had something I can show y'all like as far as a demonstration, but I don't practice this myself to have any clips. But braiders will just put all the braids in, literally just install the hair, braid it to a certain point, probably like up to where the client hair stops, leave the weave hanging, go to the next braid, install it up into where the client hair stops, leave the weave hanging then you got a whole head of braids within maybe three hours all of the braids are installed then you spend the last two hours going back in and actually braiding the braids down like i said i like to braid the braids from top to bottom the moment i install the weave um but maybe you could practice that um a lot of braiders here on youtube that i watch say that that method helps them a lot so try that out too um, shorter nails. If you're a braider that loves to have your nails done, like myself, I love to keep my nails done. I just feel like any hustle, any job I'm doing is not going to keep me from being myself. I love getting my nails done, but having shorter nails helps me stand off the phone. What I try to do is take calls before I start in between. And at the end of the day, a lot of my clients don't get responses until the very end of the day. I try to respond to most texts and phone calls. Um, but try not to pick up your phone as much. That honestly wastes a lot of time during appointments. My main tips will honestly just be prepping the hair, prepping the weave, prepping your client's hair, organizing your station, and multitasking. Those are my four main points, and that's pretty much it. I hope that trying all of these tricks, not one, not two, but literally all four of these different tricks and all of the things that I shared with you today may help you get through your appointments a little bit faster while you're still building speed. Definitely invest in a mannequin if you're a new braider and you don't have one already. While your um, clientele is really low, you don't have a lot of traffic coming in, um, you're not able to get as much practice because your clientele isn't that large. Go ahead and make your mannequin your best friend and practice as much as you can every single day. You will, you are guaranteed to build speed if you practice your skill, your hobby every single day. Um, but I also want to say, do not let your clients rush you. And definitely don't let your clients pressure you into thinking you're not a good braider or you're not good at what you do because you're moving slow. If you're slow in the beginning, but your work is good, that's fine. I honestly feel like any client would appreciate quality over efficiency any day. If you move really slow, but your work is top tier, top of the line, and they leave your chair looking good, honestly, that's all that matters. I know I would much rather sit four or five hours for a service knowing I'm going to look good than to sit two hours and get up looking janky. So definitely don't let your clients pressure you. Don't get in your own head thinking, um, you're comparing yourself to other braiders who may braid faster, thinking you got to rush through an appointment because you want to be Speedy Gonzalez. Like, definitely take your time and practice quality before you build that speed. And, you know, efficiency will come soon. That, that speed will come eventually. I've told y'all that maybe 20 times in this video. You will gain speed eventually. But in the meantime, your main thing should be consistency, the fluidity, having the braid look the same, all of the braids look precise, that clean neatness, all of that needs to be your focus when you're first starting out because that's what's going to bring the people in. Definitely want to let y'all know that. Do not feel pressure or feel less than because it takes you a whole day to get braids done. I was there and I'm pretty sure any other braider can tell you they've been there before too. You just have to work at it. Well, that is all my tips and tricks for today's video. I hope I said something that may help you guys. Um, pick up that speed. Definitely stay tuned for my braider series. If this is episode number seven and this is your first time seeing an episode, please go back and watch my first six episodes. I'm pretty sure something in any of those videos could help you. And then we're going to move forward with keeping the ball rolling. Um, my next three videos, I want to go ahead and complete season one with the next three episodes within the next month um the month of march i want to go ahead and roll out three more so definitely have on your post notifications 
um subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for those videos to come this video is strictly for braiders my next advice video will be for um people who wear a lot of protective style so the other end of the conversation basically coming up in my next girl talk some things that may help you benefit from wearing braids so definitely stay tuned for that i'm gonna drop a lot of gems in that video so yeah we'll resume the conversation in our next girl talk until then i love you guys and see you in the next video Bye.